Hey guys, God bless you all. God bless you all. So today I would just like to read us some scripture. I am going to be reading Psalm 91, um, the entire chapter. I'm going to read it in two different translations though. We're going to start with the King, uh, the New King James. And then I want to read a translation called the Message Translation, which I'm honestly not very familiar with. But when I was trying to decide what translation I wanted to read today, I just clicked on the Message Translation and I really, really liked it. So, but first, like I said, I want to read the New King James first because the Message Translation is not a word for word translation. It's kind of like the New Living Translation where they add a little bit to it, I guess you could say. It's it's just worded a little different. So I want to be sure to give you the real, true, authentic word first. So before I start, y'all look at this beautiful tapestry. That is a picture of the cross from the view of a tomb. This right here, this is a tomb and you can see the stone right here has been rolled away. So that is like if you were standing in the tomb that Jesus was raised from the dead in. There's the cross. Now I know that the cross wasn't literally right outside the tomb, but I just, I thought this was beautiful. My husband bought it for me. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. So let me pray for us real quick before we start. Lord God, oh Lord God, in Jesus name, we just worship you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the Word of God. You are Father God made flesh. You are the image of the invisible God. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you into our heart, into our mind, into our home, into our family, into our finances into our careers, our dreams, our goals, our plans, Lord. We just surrender all to you. We say, God, come and have your way. Come and have your way, your will, not ours, Father. Thank you for comforting, encouraging passages in Scripture like Psalm 91 that remind us that if we seek you in your kingdom first, then we are safe. We can hide under the shadow of the Almighty. You cover us with your wings, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we can be certain that when we rest in you, we are resting secure. When we put our hope in you, we will not be disappointed. When we put all of our faith and our trust in you, you will come through in Jesus' name. We thank you for that promise, Lord. We thank you that we still serve the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, the God of Joseph, the God of Mary, the God of Noah, the God of um, the God that the apostles, that I mean the, the disciples, which did become apostles, but the, the disciples followed because Jesus, we know you are God. Holy Spirit, we know you are God. Father God, we know you are God. You are one God. Three parts, three persons, but one God. And we just worship you. We just want to honor you, Lord. We say all glory and dominion and power be unto you forever. As we go into this time of reading your word, I just ask for fresh revelation, Lord. Fresh revelation. Seal up the truth in our hearts that you are here, you are near us, you are in us, in front of us, behind us, all around us, above us, below us, you are everywhere, Lord, you are in everything. This world, it distracts us sometimes, and sometimes we lose sight of you, God. Help us not do that. Help us remember that the way to have a renewing of the mind is to dig deeper and deeper in your word. We should be eating, feeding on your word. The Bible says, man shall not live on bread alone. Jesus himself said this in the Bible. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Thank you, God, for the Bible, which is inspired by you. And 
and thank you, God, that you also still speak today, that we can hear from you outside of the Bible also. Thank you that your promises are still for today, that your power is still for today. May we never hinder you or grieve you, Holy Spirit, by trying to put you in a man-made box and tell you how, when, and where you can move. Because, Lord, you are the creator. We are the creation. You are the master, and we are the servants. And we have come to serve you, Lord, whatever it looks like. I don't care, Father. I say, send me. I will go anywhere. I will do anything. I will serve anywhere. Just to sit at your feet, Jesus. Just to sit at your feet. I pray the peace and the joy of the Lord over everyone watching this. Anyone struggling, Lord, struggling with anything, please make a way where there seems to be no way. Please make our crooked path straight. Please right every wrong, whether it be a wrong, our wrongdoing, or someone else's wrong, us, Lord. I pray that you will that you will make a way. We love you, Father God, and we just worship you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we are reading Psalm 91. Like I said, I'm going to read the King James Version for New King James. I don't know why I keep saying King James. So it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. And he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be like your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrows that fly by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Verse 7 says, A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. I prophesy to you now that even though a thousand, that no matter what happens, The weapon may be formed, but it shall not prosper in Jesus' name. Nothing can by any means harm you if you are hidden under the wing of the Almighty. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Those who find refuge under his wings shall be protected. He is our shield. He is our fortress. He is our stronghold. He is our strong tower. Jesus, Jesus. Verse 9. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread on the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot because he now it's switching to the Lord speaking in verse 14 because he has set his love upon me says the Lord therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Isn't that so just encouraging to know that 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 is for us today too. That is for us today too. Praise God. We serve a God who is not dead. He is surely alive. And like that song says, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God wants to roar through you. Holy Spirit wants to move through you. Holy Spirit wants to move in power through you, wants to break chains through you, wants to set captives free through you, wants to heal thousands through you. Submit to him and let his spirit flow freely. 
He says, I will not let you be put to shame. Don't be afraid of the anointing. I feel like I'm supposed to tell somebody that right now. And maybe I'm speaking to myself because sometimes I am afraid to step out in the anointing that I know has been put in my life. God has placed a really high calling on my life. And sometimes I just think, why? Like, why would, why would you choose someone like me? I am so ill-equipped for this. I am so unqualified. But God takes the unqualified. And he qualifies them through his Holy Spirit. So if God has given you a task or if there's been a prophetic word spoken over you that has come from the mouth of God, then I pray that you will not fear the anointing, that you will not fear failure, that you will not fear man, that you will have more faith in God than you have faith in fear, and that you will step out in your full potential into the calling and the purposes and the plans that God has for you. He has got your back and he will not let you be put to shame. So now we're going to read the message version. Still reading Psalm 91. You who sit down in high God's presence, spend the night in El Shaddai's shadow. El Shaddai is a, one of the many names for God, just in case you didn't know. Say this, God, say it with me, God, you are my refuge. I trust in you and I am safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps. He shields you from deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you and under them you are perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing. Fear nothing, fear nothing, fear nothing. Not wild wolves in the night, not flying arrows in the day, not disease that prowls through the darkness, nor disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left, no harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpses. Yes, because God is your refuge, the most high, your very own home. Evil cannot get close to you. Harm cannot get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they will catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You will walk unharmed among lions and snakes and young and kick lung, bleh, and kick young lions and serpents from the path. Verse 14, this is God speaking now. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I will give you the best care if you will only get to know me and trust me. Call me and I'll answer. Be at your side in bad times. I will rescue you and then throw you a party. I will give you a long life. I will give you a long drink of salvation. I want to go back up because as I was reading this, God said something to me. So it says, um, I will give you, God says, I will give you the best of care if only you will get to know and trust me. I heard God say that when he says, if you will get to know me there and trust me there, he does not simply mean no, know me, meaning you have opened the Bible and you've read the gospels and you have a lot of head knowledge about the Lord. That's not what he means. He says he means like in prayer, you commune with me, that you know me on an intimate level that you know me beyond reading about me in the Bible or hearing about me from others or your pastor preaching about me. The Lord says, I'm calling you to know me intimately. And then where it says, um, if only you'll get to know and trust me, the Lord says, by trust me, I do not just mean saying a salvation prayer when you were 12 years old, inviting me into your heart. I mean, truly trusting me. Trusting me with your marriage, trusting me with your children, trusting me with your career, trusting me with your finances, trusting me in the good, trusting me in the bad. 
God wants us to trust him with all. And he judges the heart, so he knows when we really trust him and when we really do not. But if we can be, uh, if we can be committed to getting to know him on a deeper level and, to tr and trusting him to the best of our ability, then he promises right here, he says, if you'll do those two things, I will give you the best of care. If you will hold on to me for dear life, I will get you out of any trouble. Call me and I will answer. I will be at your side in bad times. I will rescue you and then I will throw you a party. I will give you a long life and give you a long drink of salvation. Also, I feel like God's wanting me to speak to you guys about anointing oil. Hold on just a second. I'm going to go get mine. Okay, so this is one of my bottles of anointing oil. This one is a pretty big bottle. It's uh, three ounces, but I also have one that I carry around with me when I go places, and it's just one ounce. So I really feel like God, um, or I know, not just I feel like, I know for certain, that God has really had me lately speaking to pretty much everyone I've spoke to. Um, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, so the Lord speaks to me as he does a lot of people I know, but he'll give me like a message to give to someone or, you know, a word for them. And lately for the past several weeks, it seems like it's, it's included anointing gold. God is calling his church to start purifying themselves, to start sanctifying themselves, to start cleansing themselves. And I don't know if you use anointing gold or not, but if you don't, I really encourage you to start. Okay. There are many verses in the Bible about anointing oil. Um, I anoint myself. I anoint my husband. I anoint my children. Um, I anoint my home. I go around and I anoint the doors, the windows, any entryway into my home. I anoint all electronic devices. I anoint pillows. I anoint all kinds of stuff. And the reason I do that is not so much because the oil holds the power. The power comes from the Holy Spirit. The power comes because of the name of Jesus. But this, it's, it's biblical um, when you're sick to use anointing oil um, for many, many different reasons. So I really feel like God is saying to the church right now, to all who have ears that will listen, He is saying, I want you to consecrate yourself. On a deeper level. I want you to start using anointing oil. I want you to put it on yourself and I want you to declare my promises over your life. I want you to declare things over your life. I want you to declare a sound mind. I want you to declare good health. I want you to declare breakthrough in whatever area you need it. Our words hold power and the Lord says it's time to start speaking words of life and stop speaking words of death. It's time to start speaking blessings instead of speaking word curses. Our words hold power. The Bible tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. We need to speak life. But so if you don't have anointing oil, um, I'm, I, I will probably do a separate video on this, like teaching, you know, how to make and pray over your anointing oil. But I'm just going to tell you real quick, you can either go buy some anointing oil from like a Christian bookstore. You can order it off Amazon. Uh, Walmart may even have it, but I don't really know. I don't know that I've ever seen it there. Probably not, actually. Or you can just use olive oil. That's what this is. This is just olive oil, and I got this container from Walmart for like a, a buck. Um, and then if you are making your own, or really if you order it too, then you want to make sure that you pray over it. So you just put the oil in the container, you separate it from the other oil, and then you just hold it up and you just say something along the lines of, Oh Lord God, I I consecrate this oil, for, or I set this, this oil aside for your use, Lord. This oil is used for holy use, Lord. I pray that you would consecrate it, Father, and that you would infuse it with your power, Holy Spirit. And you can just say anything you want, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit's leading you to say. The, but, Jesus, I'm just, it's like my, the, what I'm trying to say is just literally getting taken out of my head. There is an attack on our mind as children of God. One of the devil's favorite places to attack us. And when I say the devil, I don't just mean Lucifer. 
when I say the devil, I'm talking about devils. There's more than one devil. There's a whole bunch of devils, demons, evil spirits, whatever you want to call them. They're roaming to and fro. They are looking for somewhere to sleep, somewhere to rest, somewhere to lay their head. I don't know if I should have said sleep. That's probably not the proper term, but I meant to say rest. But anyways, you know what I'm saying. We need to be suited up in our spiritual armor. See Ephesians 6, if you don't know what I'm talking about. And we need to start listening to God better. We need to start listening for that, that soft whisper. And when he tells us to do things that may seem like they don't really have much purpose, things like anointing ourselves, we need to be obedient and we need to do what the Lord is saying. And I come to you today in the name of the Lord, and I'm telling you that the Lord says to start anointing yourself. I don't know why, but I do know that he's saying it and he's been saying it for a while. So please be obedient. But anyways, I just pray blessings over you in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus loves you so much, so much. And he's going to prosper you. He's going to protect you. Run to the arms of the Father. If you stay close to him, if you stay connected to the true vine, then truly nothing can harm you. Like I said, the weapon may be formed, but it shall not prosper in Jesus' name. But you have to stay close to the Father. When we venture away from Him, when we try to go our own way, our own path, our own will, then we put ourselves out in the open and we make ourselves more easy. Uh, we make ourselves easier to be attacked. Uh, it's easier for us to be attacked when we are not close to the Father. And how we can get close to the Father is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. He has feelings just like you and I do. And he wants to be in our lives and he wants to have first place in our lives. He wants to be included in everything we do, our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, he wants us to include him in every plan, in every conversation. He just wants to feel included. And when we grieve him or shun him or quench him, he doesn't scream like, hey, what's wrong with you? No, what he'll do is he'll just get quiet and he'll just quit talking. Now, he's still there. The Bible promises that he will never leave us, but he will get quiet. And I've been through points in my um, life these past two years. I was radically saved August of 2020. I was a, a powerless, lukewarm, religious Christian before. But then I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, August of 2020. So I say that's when I truly gave my life to Christ. But um, since then, there have been moments when I have been stubborn and rebellious. And I have tried to go my own way. And I've tried to listen to other voices that were not the Holy Spirit. And I have found that it has really seriously grieved God. And that he has gone silent on me until I repent. And repent does not just mean to apologize. Repent means to literally turn from what you are currently doing and to do something different. To a change of behavior. A change of heart that leads to a change of action or a change of behavior. So anyways, I'm just saying all this to say be obedient to the Lord. If God's asking you to do something, anything, whatever it may be, do it because you want to keep hearing from him. It is so hard when you are just wanting to hear from God so bad that you have just separated yourself from his presence. You've put like a wall in between the two of you um, because you've tried to do things your own way. And it's just heartbreaking and it's very depressing and discouraging. But that doesn't have to happen. That doesn't ever have to happen. If we'll just stay in the Father's will, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and welcome in the Holy Spirit. Be welcoming. Tell him every day, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I surrender to you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. Also, pray every day. Okay, I just heard God say yes to this. So what I'm fixing to say, he's saying yes. Holy Spirit himself is saying yes to this. Pray every single day for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. I know there's, there's a denomination, maybe more than one denomination, 
that believes that there is not reoccurring feelings of the Holy Spirit, that we are only filled once when we give our life to Christ and that that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, if you look in Acts 2 during Pentecost, it says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. But if you look a couple of chapters later, I believe chapter 4, we see again that they were filled with the Holy Spirit again. And if you look all throughout the New Testament, you will see that again and again and again, that these same people are filled filled with the Holy Spirit, people that have already given their life to Christ that are already Christians. So that shows us we can be filled more than once. God wants to fill you to overflowing every day. So ask him. The Bible says if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, then how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So ask, ask. And if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you if you are a Christian but you don't feel like I'm trying to find the right words. If you are a Christian, but you don't feel like you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you don't really feel that fire inside of you. That's okay because God wants to do that for you and he will do it for you today. I'm just going to pray for you real quick. Oh, I just pray for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit for this one right now. The one watching this right now, I say, Holy Spirit fire, flood them right now in Jesus' name. Fresh filling of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray you release their prayer language, release their tongue, release their prayer language, Lord. In Jesus' name. Oh, God says he is breaking down religious barriers today. He is breaking down religious barriers today. He said some of you have been so blinded and so bound by religion that you don't know, that you don't allow me to live in you. You don't allow my Holy Spirit to live in you. And you are so blinded by your deception that you don't even know. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We desire your spirit. We desire the gifts of the spirit. We know they are still for today. For anyone who doesn't believe they are still for today. I pray that you would open their eyes and soften their hearts to see the truth, Lord. Your word says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Thank you for the authority you give us in your name, Jesus. Thank you that we don't have to be a slave to sin. We don't have to be a slave to depression, anxiety, PTSD, any of those things, anger, rage, bitterness. You give us authority, authority, your authority, Jesus. So may we walk in authority. May we walk in power and not just religion. I know that our religion will not save us. It's our relationship with you that will. We just honor you, Lord. I thank you for revealing yourself to me in such a powerful way. I know I'm very blessed because that's not the way that it usually happens for a lot of people. <laughs> I just heard God say, it could happen for many more if they would be willing to believe. Lord, we believe, but help us with our unbelief. We just want to submit to you, Lord. We just want to please you, Lord. We want you to know you are welcome here. We are your home. The Bible says that our bodies are temples of the Almighty God. You are welcome in my temple, Holy Spirit, all the days of my life. The throne of my heart belongs to you. All I have belongs to you. My family belongs to you. My money belongs to you. My life belongs to you. Thank you for saving my life from the pits of hell. You pulled me up out of that slimy pit and you set me upon a rock. 
and you cleaned me up. You washed me clean with your blood. May I never forget where I came from, Lord. May I never forget the Egypt that you rescued me from. I just heard the Lord say that some of you need to realize that you have to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land. You have to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. God bless you all. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Remember that those who stay close to the Lord, those who hide under his shadow, shall be protected. No harm shall ever take them. No sickness, no evil spirits. Jesus says, I have given you all authority all authority. Jesus says you will do the things I did and then greater things. If you are not doing the things Jesus did, then you are not truly living in your calling. You are not truly living in your God-given purpose. Even if you have a nice career, a nice home, a lot of money, a beautiful family, if you are not advancing the kingdom of God, then you're not truly living out your purpose. And I'm not saying everyone has to be a pastor or a preacher or a prophet. I'm not saying that. You could be a school teacher who goes to a school every day and touches the lives of the children there by showing them love and grace when they don't get that at home. That could be your calling. Maybe you're a stay-at-home mother and your calling right now is to minister to the little ones in your home. Whatever your calling is, because it looks different for all of us, we need you. We need every part of the body for the body to function. Without one of the legs, we can't walk right. Without the head, well, the head's Jesus. Without the arm, without the fingers, we have to have every part. We also need to realize that each part is different and we need to accept each other's differences. Some of the things I do may seem weird to you. I may look a little crazy when I get on here praying in tongues, but all I know to tell you is you wouldn't want to see me in my prayer closet when the camera's turned off then if you think this is weird because I seriously have to contain myself in these videos, and I shouldn't. It's because I still have some things in me that need to be worked out. I care too much what people think. I should be on here just letting the Holy Ghost just move and flow freely, but even I still hinder him sometimes because I care too much what you think. But it's okay for us to be different. That's not a bad thing. But we can't judge one another. We need each other. We need each other. We can't do this alone. Jesus Christ is the head and we are the church. And the church must be in unity. So whatever your gifts are, I'm grateful for you. I'm so grateful for you. And I pray you feel the same way about me and my gifts. And we shouldn't be jealous of each other's gifts either. And if there's a gift that you see someone else has that you wished you had, then ask God. Keep on asking. And I wouldn't be surprised if he'd give it to you. But be grateful for the gifts you have, no matter how big or how small they seem to be, because there is a purpose behind them. God bless you all. Have a great rest of your day.